Well, I think they're doing a good job. I really do. And it's been a work in progress. It's a team that started slowly, had a lot of building to do. And uh, you can see them coming along. You mentioned the Giants game. That was a great disappointment. But that happens. But most of the time, they've won the games they've been expected to win. And they've lost the games where you figure they were going to be in for a tough time. So, But I, I think the coaching staff has done a good job. Uh, you just have to be patient. Patient is a word that isn't used very much in these parts because patient is close to passion. And these two often collide. But uh, the, the truth of the matter is they are doing a good job. It really does. All right, guys, without further ado, it is the holiday season, and he was so kind enough to do this for me on the bye week, and I so love Merrill Reese, and he joins us now here and on a football Friday. Merrill, I'm going to throw this at you here. We're going to start this bad puppy off. You ready? I, okay. came, I came up with um, the Mount Rushmore of Philadelphia Eagle and Sixers and Flyers and Philly Stars on who should be on this Mount Rushmore. I've got, okay, I put on Schmidt, Bednarik, Bobby Clark, and does Jason Kelsey deserve to be on that? Yes. Yes. I would put Jason Kelsey on there. He's the best center. He's the best center that this team has had since Chuck Bednarik. Wow. So – of all the great superstar athletes, and you know what was so cool to see, Merrill, that he was able to get, you know, the Walter Payton Award for the Philadelphia Eagles, then he'll be the, the national guy at the end. What, what has made him so endearing to the Eagle fans, you think? Uh, the fact that, that he's tough. Probably uh, Nick Sirianni said he's the toughest guy he has ever met. I mean, you take him out of a game and he's totally banged up and he can hardly drag himself to the sideline. And they take him back to the locker room. And miraculously, the next time you blink, you can see him lining up behind the ball and ready to go again. He's amazing. And he never makes excuses. He, uh, he takes the losses hard. He fights. And he's somebody who doesn't just do his job. But he, he blocks an extra man, takes out two men on a block. He's uh, just a great, great football player. He's tough. He just can't keep him out of the lineup. Merrill, uh, let's go back from last year to this year, and I want to ask you something here. And again, not throwing any kind of shade on Doug Peterson. I'm not doing that at all. But what has been the difference, you think, from a year ago to today when you look at the team? And would you say is the team better than it was a year ago today? And what's been that difference in your opinion? Well, I, I'll give you one thing. The biggest difference is the fact that last time – Last year, you had 14 different offensive line combinations. Right now, even though the guards who started the season are out, uh, that offensive line is la anchored by Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, the right tackle, and the left tackle, Jordan Mailata, who is a mountain of a man and a great player, and next to him is Landon Dickerson. So you're talking about over 700 pounds of muscle on the left side of that offensive line. I think the offensive line has made the biggest difference. You, you, you know, Merrill, I, I've been saying this about that left side of that offensive line with Dickerson and Milata. They were, it's starting to remind me of Shell and Upshaw when they had those great offensive line with the Raiders, you know. And when you can get stability like that, that is really a great formula to build around. And I say this to you too, Merrill. I think the Eagles are in such a great place. And let me throw it out at you. Not only do they have an opportunity to run the table here and potentially make the playoffs, you're going to be $50 million under the salary cap going into next year. You're going to have 11 draft choices, three first-rounders. They're positioned, they're positioned very well right now for the future of the Eagles. you agree? I do agree. I, I really do agree. In fact, the week from Sunday, the Eagles in Washington, uh, that to me is the most critical game they have played in a long time. If the Eagles can beat Washington – Next Sunday, they are right in the mix for a wild card spot. But that's a big if. That's a big if. That's a tough, tough game. And they need everybody to play well. They need Jalen Hurts 
to return and be strong and play at his best. They need the wide receivers to do their job. Uh, they've got a great tight end. I want to tell you something. I mean, we know how good Devontae Smith is, but at tight end, they have Dallas Goddard, and and he is a force. He's he's going to be a pro bowl. He should be a pro bowl uh, tight end this year. That's how good he is, Stan. You know, let me throw this at you, too. I think the job that Howie Roseman, and I know a lot of people are going to go like this. They're probably going to just – they're probably going to throw shade at me here when I say this, but – so you go get Gardner Minshew, you make a deal for Darius Slay, you've got salary cap space, you've got 11 draft choices. Hey, as much as we sit here and say that Howie Roseman takes a lot of heat, he's done a well of a job at actually putting this team, as we just said, in a position where the future looks bright, and you're doing it on the fly where you're trying to contend. Is that a fair statement? I think it's a fair statement. I think he's had a heck of a draft. When you think of Devontae Smith in the first round and you think of Landon Dickerson, who teams might have backed off taking in the first round because of its injury pass. And and you talk about the other people that they've vetted. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell has been pretty good. Milton Williams is pretty good. Uh, Zach McPherson is playing now. I mean, this this is a great this is an excellent draft class. Now, Slay came last year and didn't have a lot of success, but the pass rush wasn't there. There were a lot of mitigating circumstances, but Slay is having a Pro Bowl season. Slay has four turnovers so far and three interceptions, and he's a leader on that defense. He's been great. He really has been. Let's go over here in this one, too, here, Gardner Minshew. Um, you know, a lot of fans, there was, you know, you know, as you know, Merrill, the most popular player on any team is the backup quarterback. Yep. You, you, you mean, you know, he, he's the savior of saviors and all, but – just give me a sense of what you thought and what you saw his play against the Jets. Well, he did an excellent job. There's no doubt about that. I mean, he had a quarterback rating in the 130s, and he, he completed 80% of his passes. So he played very, very well. There's nothing bad you could say about Gardner, Gardner Minshew and what he did. He had an excellent game. You have to temper it, though, Dan, by saying it was the New York Jets. Uh, and they were absolutely terrible defensively. There was a lot of cushion. But you can't blame him. All he did was take advantage of what was there. But he he did an excellent job. You know, the chest bump, and I thought I was watching Pete Mitchell from uh, Top Gun. I mean, this guy comes in with his, like, fighter pilot jacket on. He's yeah. got the shades on. He's quite a character, isn't he? Yeah, he apparently he is. <laughs> uh, I, I said apparently because I haven't met a player who's been here, for the who, who came in during the last two years because we're still not allowed in the building. And we're not traveling with the team, so I, it's, uh, Merrill. How does that? How does that affect you? I mean, you know, because you're so close to the team, and as you said in the past, you know, you've covered the team for over 50 years. I mean, how has that been different for you in your preparation when it comes to calling a game and studying on the team? Because before, you could look the players in the face, talking to Seth Joyner or talking to a Jason Kelsey. You could look these guys and have a great personal relationship. How has that affected the way you've prepared for the games? That That's everything that you just said. Uh, there's no personal contact. So I know the guys who came in prior to last year. I still know them well. And I, 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 I will be at uh, media conferences out, the outside under a tent where there's maybe 50 people under the tent uh, the firing questions at a player. So I'll see that. Uh, but I'm not on the plane. And, there's no, and, and that's the same for everybody throughout the league, really. And it's understandable because the league is doing everything they can to keep the games going on and keep teams from being ravaged by this this horrible pandemic. You have to miss going into those places or, or here, I know this. I do not like to travel. Okay. I don't like to get on airplanes. However, you know, I, I, I would think for somebody that's, you know, been in a love affair with that football team, that is such a civic pride for the city of Philadelphia, that that's something that you probably miss a lot. Isn't it just being around the fellas? I do. I do. I enjoyed the trips. No doubt, being on the plane and staying in their hotels and the contact that you have along the way. But I understand it. It's just a fact of life. So we do the – although the, the last two games against the Giants and the Jets, uh, we, we drove up to the uh, MetLife Stadium and we did the games live and in person. Otherwise, uh, when they're on the road, it's, it's all doing going back to our broadcast booth 
at Lincoln Financial Field, looking out the window into vast emptiness and calling it off the big screen, and that's it. <laughs> but uh, look, that's that's part of the job, and that's the way it's doing. That's the way we do it this year. So you adapt to it. The only thing that happened, Daniel, I don't know if I mentioned this to you the last time I was on the first Dallas game, and we're we're on real time, and we're getting the real crowd noise in our headset. So it's a satellite feed. So Dak Prescott goes back, and I say, Prescott goes back, and he cocks the arm, and I said, he's looking. And at that exact second, the satellite picture froze. <laughs> and I'm going, he's looking, he's looking, he's still <laughs> looking. And, and finally, finally, the picture started to move again. And I said, boy, did he get great protection. <laughs> Only you could do that, Merrill. That's absolutely okay. So, Merrill Reese, it's Dallas and Washington this weekend. Who are you rooting for? <laughs> oh, uh, listen, you you know how Eagles fans have always been about Dallas, but in this case, uh, for the good of the team, I think it would benefit the Eagles for Dallas to beat Washington. Strictly nothing personal, just mathematical. The fact that the, the Cowboys would have to have a complete collapse not to win the NFC East. Um, the the Eagles could really benefit if Washington loses. Oh, absolutely, Merrill. I think get this: they're talking Tony Pollard might not even go this weekend. Zeke's banged up too. I think Washington's going to beat them this weekend, and that means that Washington will be a game behind. And then we get Washington on the other side of that. This thing could get a little bit tighter as the injuries start to pile up for the Cowboys a little bit here. It could be interesting. My only regret is that it that giant game. May cost the Eagles. couple last questions for you. The assistant coaches, how impressed have you been with them? Because it's been a contentious year. A lot of fans are going, Jonathan Gannon, and I'll throw a stat at you too here, Merrill. Over the last six games, they are the number one rushing attack in the NFL. They're number two in point score, 29-7. Mm-hmm. They are number seven in giving up 17.7 points a game. The team is really playing well over the last six if you put it all together. What's been your impression so far, what you've seen with the coaching staff? Well, I think they're doing a good job. I really do, and it's been a work in progress. It's a team that started slowly, had a lot of building to do, and uh, you can see them coming along. You mentioned the Giants game. That was a great disappointment. But that happens. But most of the time, they've won the games they've been expected to win and they've lost the games where you figure they were going to be in for a tough time. So, but I, I think the coaching staff has done a good job. Uh, you just have to be patient. Patient is a word that isn't used very much in these parts because patient is close to passion and these two often collide. But uh, the, the truth of the matter is they are doing a good job. Final question for you. Why do you think it's so inconsistent of people's thoughts on Jalen? I mean, I had Jimmy Johnson on this week, and Jimmy was like, I'm not so sure. I had another guy who's completely sold. Uh, Mike Golick is completely sold. You talk to whomever, Ross Tucker, he's completely sold on him. Or Brian Baldinger is kind of waffling a little bit on him. Is it just because of the style of play, Merrill, that he has where it's not conventional on moving the yardsticks where he's the most accurate guy, but it's kind of a 2.0 version of what's going on in Baltimore. They win games, okay? Just not like everyone else wins games with a traditional drop back. Is that why it's so inconsistent, the, the analysis on Jalen? You know, he really only had one really bad game against the Giants. I think people yeah. are afraid to be wrong. I think it's no more complicated than that. They don't want to say anything and, and see what they say not come true. Uh, I will sit here and tell you, I think he's going to be a very, very good quarterback. I think he's growing. He's now started 16 games. Uh, he, he's got I, – I've, I've read in the newspapers – and I've heard commentators say that he doesn't have a very strong arm. He has a very strong arm. His arm strength is above average NFL arm strength. He can throw the 20-yard out pattern. Everybody can loop at 70 yards, 60 yards. But he can throw that 20-yard that out pattern. I've seen it do it, do it time and time again. I've seen him throw darts to beat the defense and get it to Devontae Smith. He has to work on improving his accuracy in the pocket. There are things that he has to learn. But uh, he, he just needs a lot of coaching. 
He needs to develop in different areas. He's a marvelous athlete. He is every bit a leader. The guys in the locker room, from everything I've been told, revere him. And I, I think he's going to be an outstanding quarterback, but it takes patience. You can't go on a quarterback carousel. Those are the teams that lose. You, you hit your wagon to a guy that you think really has a lot going for him. And I will stand here right now, Dan, and tell you, I believe in him. I absolutely here. I need one bit of advice before you go. Okay, help me out on Eagle fans and Philadelphia sports fans. What's the one thing that I need to know not to do? One thing that you shouldn't do? Yeah, one thing that I need to know not to do to Philadelphia fans, Philadelphia sports fans, what's the one thing I have to make sure that I don't do or I need to know? Well, they're, they're, you should know that they're great fans. Oh, they you are. You should know that they are absolutely great fans. And smart. Yes, but, but All right, I'll tell you what not to do. Don't tell the old story because it's been told 7,966 times that they once upon a time booed Santa Claus. They are tired of hearing that. That's the one thing you shouldn't do. <laughs> Meryl, Merry Christmas to you. I love you so much, man. Thank you so much for doing this, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Meryl. Thanks, Dan. Take care and stay well. You got it. I appreciate that. Okay, so the booing of Santa Claus you guys hate. Okay, two things came out of that interview that I totally loved. Jason Kelsey belongs on the Mount Rushmore of Philadelphia sports. And don't ever bring up the booing of Santa Claus. <laughs> Saint says Santa was drunk. Oh, my God. Guys, I got a great Santa story. My grandfather told me. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, hang on, Paul. So he just goes like this. Sills. Don't 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 bring up don't 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 bring up the booing of Santa. Hit the like button. We'll be right back. We'll reset. You keep it here on the National Football Show.